Now we shall be looking into the concepts that what would be the force between two parallel current carrying conductors? Forget about two parallel carrying conductors or current carrying conductors, right? Just now concentrate on one pa like current carrying conductor. Say for example, if this is the current carrying conductor over here and the I is denoted as like this. Say for example, the I that is flowing is equal to I1. If the length of this conductor is equal to L, right, and over here we intend to find out at this point that what would be the value of the magnetic field due to this conductor. First of all, the distance between this point and this current carrying conductor, say let it be R. Right? Now, if you could recollect, we did found out that the magnitude of B or the magnitude of this C. This is the scenario of force between two parallel current carrying conductors. It is not given that there is any kind of existing magnetic field present. No. We are going to see that how the magnetic field is going to affect and what things are going to take place. So first of all, one current carrying conductor, it is carrying current, obviously it would generate a magnetic field, right? And the value of the magnetic field that will be produced at this point, so for example, this point as P and this is a, B, right? This current carrying conductor as A, B and this point P which is separated by a distance of R, which is the shortest distance, which means that this will be the perpendicular distance, right? We know, let us say, take this as C. So, the B at point P will be equals to We know that for a current carrying conductor, this one is equals to mu naught i divided by 2 pi r, where r is the distance of separation between them, and over here observe that this i is basically this i1, right? So it will come out as mu naught i1 divided by 2 pi r. Now forget about this magnitude. Come for the direction. Then what will be the direction of this magnetic field at this particular given point P? Say for example this one is the current carrying conductor. We place our right hand thumb along the direction of the current, then obviously as per the corkscrew rule or the Maxwell's right hand thumb rule, it states that the curling of the other fingers will give us the direction of the magnetic field that is produced. So see, the other fingers are curling in this direction. So the B that will be produced will be like this. It will be over here coming like this and entering at this point. Right? It means that the B will penetrate now the whiteboard. And what was the symbol? The symbol was like this. Okay? So this over here at point P, like the B that is the BP, it will be the direction that it will penetrate this whiteboard. Now, at this particular point, if we keep another current carrying conductor, which is parallel to AC, so we shall observe 
And now the current can in conductor likewise. Let us check that this is equals to D E of the same length. If the length of this is equals to L, the length of D E will also be equals to L. So over here, L equals to A C as well as D E. Right? Now, see that over here, let us check that the current that is flowing through this conductor is in the same direction as I1 and let the magnitude of this be I2. Now, as for the previous lecture, we have noted that over here, see, there is a B acting and there is I acting. So, obviously, if I is over here, then there will be a drift of the electrons. If there is a drift of the electron in an existing uniform magnetic field, obviously the Lorentz force is going to get enacted. So, the Lorentz force now, that will be enacted over here at this point, we could say that the Lorentz force that is enacted over the entire DE, let us represent it by F of DE, right, will be equal to BIL sin theta. BIL sin theta. Now observe what is B over here. The B is the same as is produced by AC. So what is the B over here? The B is BP, right? So we will write this as BP. Now what will be the I in this scenario? The I in this scenario will not be I1. But this will be equals to I2. Because the current flowing in this GE is simply equals to I2, right? And what is the length? The length is simply equals to L. So, this F of this DE will be equals to BP multiplied by this I2 multiplied by this length and sine theta. What is the theta? If we could remember, the theta was the angle between the length. The length over here is taken as the direction of this I. So the length is over here in this direction. So the angle made between the length and the magnetic field is theta. Length is in this direction and B is penetrating right inside. So what will be the angle? Simply 90 degrees. So over here we could say that this theta is equals to 90 or we could state it as pi by 2, right? So the sine of pi by 2 is simply equals to 1. So we can write this Fd as equals to The magnitude of the Lorentz force over here will be equals to, we replace this BP by this expression as mu naught I1 divided by 2 pi R multiplied by this I2 multiplied by this L. Right? Because the sign that is only equals to 1. Now, we could get this Lorentz force which is enacting on this DE current carrying conductor per unit length means whatever the Lorentz force we have observed in this expression will be divided by L right so the left out expression will be equals to mu naught I1, I2 divided by 2 pi R. Right? Now, 
this will be the expression for the force between two parallel current carrying conductors, right? Now, for example, if we take the other case, that first of all we take this conductor and forget about AC, we will see that the B which is generated, for example, at this particular point, say Q, it will be simply equal to mu naught multiplied by this I2 divided by 2 pi R, because R is the distance of separation between P and Q, right? After that, if it is I2, so the F or the Lorentz force exerted on AC will simply be equals to BP, uh, not BP, that will be BQ, multiplied by I1 in this scenario now of L sine theta. Now, if you observe in this scenario, you will see that the thumb indicates the direction of the current. So the curling of the other fingers will actually give us the direction of the magnetic field. See, over here, if this is likewise, so it is coming likewise. At this particular point, it will come outside the paper, right? Which means at this point, if we wish to find out, it will be simply like this. It could be denoted like this, right? And over here, the B at this direction, L in this direction, will be mutually perpendicular, which means that the theta in that scenario will also be equal to pi by 2. So, this BP now will have the I2 component and this will now be the I1 component. So, again we will get the FDE per unit length will be equal to mu naught multiplied by I1, I2 divided by 2 pi R. So, the F, A, C, so the force now which is enacted on AC due to the current flowing in DB will be of per unit length will again be same as the expression above as mu naught I1 I2 divided by 2 pi R. So now we can state that F of AC per unit length is basically equals to F of DE per unit length. Right? Now Whatever we have discussed over here, it is simply about the magnitude. What about the direction of the forces, right? Say for example, this FDE, we need to take, okay, take the help of the Fleming's left hand rule. Because initially we are not taking the Fleming's left hand rule because at that particular point of time, only I was present. You needed to find out the B, the direction of B. Only one is present and the another one is absent. You need to find out, take the help of the small screw rule or the Maxwell's right hand thumb rule. Now, if two things are known and you need to like find out the third one, you need to take the help of either flame, the Fleming's left hand rule or the Fleming's right hand rule based on the circumstances. Now over here we have B, we have I, we just need to find out F, so we are going to take the help of the Fleming's left hand rule. Index finger along the direction of B, like this. Now this middle finger along the direction of I, like this. And then the thumb will indicate the direction of the force of FDE. See, the thumb is in this direction now. So now we can write that 
the F D E will be in this direction. We found out the magnitude. Now we found out the direction. Now come for A C. B for the index finger. Where the B is? The B is in this direction. It is coming outside the paper. I is the eye like this? No. The eye is in opposite direction. So we have to take like B over here and I as like this. So it will be coming over here. You could take as thus if it is B and we need to take the eye if it is downward but the actual eye is upward. So you can take the opposite of this force. Right? Because over here, see, this is actually the index finger pointing the B over like this. The I, is it downward? Yes, my finger is pointing downward, but I is actually upward. So whatever the direction of course we will be getting, we need to just reverse it. Right? So the direction of force now be on this side. So this will be the direction of the force FAC. Not closely observe that FAC and FDE are actually going and meeting towards a point. Which means that this FDE which was exerted due to this I, it is going to attract this DE. And again, this GE piece of conducting wire is going to attract this AC. So if ever we find out that there are like two parallel current carrying conductors such that the I or the current is in the same direction, we could say that they are going to attract. Otherwise, if they are on the opposite direction, I, they are going to ripple. For example, let us check that over here we have taken, say, for example, say this one is the beaker and it has like say got some solution in it and we have inserted two wires now see and let over here there is another one wire Connected. Now closely also, if this is the positive side and this is the negative side of the battery, obviously the current shall flow like this. See I. Now it will come to this point and get diverted. Say for example, this is I1 and this is I2. Over here this current will come likewise, this is I1. Now closely observe that this I1 and I2, they are both along the same direction likewise. So they are going to attract each other. But after like this, going into the solution, the I will go on the negative side. So if the eye will go on the negative side likewise, it will be having the direction, then only the eye could go and complete the circuit. Now observe over here that the I1 is in opposite direction to this eye, which means they are going to ripple each other. Again, I2 is in opposite direction to I. Again, this is going to ripple each other. Right? So, we can say that, like we can say it as cases, as 
case 1 first of all both the wires must be parallel and they must be current carrying conductors after that case 1 it says that if I1 and I2 both along same direction then what will happen simply attraction will going to take place likewise for the case 2 let us give as case for case 2 we can say that if I1 and I2 both opposite direction then we can say see both in opposite direction then we can say that over here the repulsion is going to take place right now if we do observe at any of this expression such that this is the Lorentz force or the force that is exerted on one of the conducting wire due to the current in the another conducting wire we could see that it is equal to mu naught multiplied by I1 I2 divided by 2 pi r let us check for example for the time being that here I1 is equals to I2 is equals to 1 ampere and the value of R or the distance of separation between them as equals to 1 meter right we will find out that this Lorentz magnetic force that is exerted on one of the conducting wire due to the other simply we could write it as F as equals to at that point of time mu naught multiplied by 1 multiplied by 1 divided by 2 pi multiplied by 1 or is equals to mu naught divided by 2 pi mind that we are taking the scenario in free vacuum right that is the reason why we are taking it as mu naught the permeability and what we know the permeability of free space simply this will be equals to like 4 pi multiplied by 10 to the power minus 7 divided by 2 pi right so if we cancel out this pi with this pi and 2 with this 4 the left out is only 2 on the numerator side we shall find out that f is equals to 2 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 7 Newton. Now, why have we deduced this expression? We have deduced this expression in the special circumstances when both the current carrying conductor is carrying the current of 1 ampere each and they are separated by unit distance of one meter right so from this entire thing we could deduce a very very important aspect of the current electricity yes you got it right the ampere the definition of ampere right the definition of ampere by looking at this deduction we could say it as that one ampere is that amount of current which when flows in two parallel current carrying infinitely long conduct 
factors such that the distance of separation between them is equal to 1 meter, then the force which is exerted on both the parallel current carrying conductor will be equal to 2 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 7 Newton per unit length. Why per unit length? Because this expression from where we are deducing this it is per unit length. Right? So, in this lecture now we are able to understand the magnitude of the Lorentz magnetic force for this between two parallel current carrying conductors and also the direction that whether they are going to attract or repel each other and also the definition of ampere. Thank you.